All right, everyone, we are going to get started here in just a couple minutes. If you haven't already, if you're borrowing the Chromebook from us here and you have it with you, we'd like you to try to log in now and we can help you sort out any issues. So you should be logging in with your students' MySoda email address that we've created for them. The information I have up here on the slide shows you how, what the breakdown is. Um, the username of your student or that email address is always their first name, period, last name at mysoda.net. If you have apostrophes in their name or dashes, those are not going to be a part of the email address. If they have a hyphenated last name, the first name is what will appear as the email address. Okay, so it's a first name, period, last name at mysoda.net. So you guys can log into the Chromebook by adding person with your student's credentials. And then their password for third grade is their student ID number. If you don't know what their student ID number is, just let us know. And um, your third grade teachers here are awesome and they actually have everyone's student ID number ready to hand you if you need it. So just let us know at any point. Throughout the presentation, we're gonna, we're gonna introduce you guys and hopefully answer all of your questions. Um, at the end, we'll do a Q&A. So if you have like a pressing question at the moment that applies to the masses, raise your hand and one of our staff members can come to you and, and address that with you. Um, but otherwise, at the end, I'm opening it up for you guys to ask questions both virtually um, and then here at school. Can you hear me okay? Cool. Um, all right, so we're gonna get started. Bear with me, everyone. I'm on Zoom right now with all the parents that are at home while I'm presenting to you here. So um, we're, we're very flexible this year in 2020, so we're all kind of navigating this together as a team. So um, bear with me as I make it through. Um, so before I get started, I want um, our, our support services are in here, and I wanted to introduce these ladies because they're going to have to move around tonight. Um, so over here we have Ms. Boswell. Ms. Boswell can raise her hand and wave. Ms. Boswell is our reading intervention specialist, so she may be working with some of your families um, throughout this school year. Um, Ms. Rice is talking to a family member over here. Um, with the pretty blonde hair, Ms. Rice is our ESC coordinator, so she is managing our different services here at school. We also have Ms. Jackie Newcomb. She's not in the room at the moment, but when she pops in, I'll point her out. She's another one of our reading, push-in, and ESC support um, facilitators. Uh, over here, you have the people I'm sure you are excited to meet here. First and foremost, your third grade teachers. So you have Ms. Hicks here up front. She can wave. And then we have Ms. Hilliard here. And the teal, they're gonna, they have a presentation for you after I'm done, so they're gonna get to share about themselves and all the exciting things with your students uh, that we're gonna get through. So we're gonna move through. Okay, um, Ms. Hilliard, would you join Jalexis over at the computer? There's a few people that need student ID numbers, so we can type them into the chat with Jalexis. Okay, all right, we're gonna get started. No. It was working. <laughs> oh, is it? Okay, cool. Okay, I just have to, I have to be closer. Okay, all right, here we go. Um, so welcome everyone. Uh, again, thank you so much for your patience and coming to join us here tonight while we present to you in this very peculiar and bizarre 2020 year how we're going to teach your children and care for them through this virtual experience. Um, this school year, we came up with a theme for our school community, um, has to do with honeybees and the beehive. So our school is like the hive. Um, our students are kind of like our bees, all of us working together to make honey. 
Uh, we have a theme this year, uh, specifically our slogan that we are using is focus on the nectar, not the noise. It might just be too much. If you can just skip ahead for me. All right, there we go. Um, okay, so again, our school-wide theme is just in this difficult time that we're all kind of navigating together is that um, the honeybee is actually aerodynamically, it shouldn't be able to fly. Their body weight is pretty um, high compared to the tiny surface area of their wings, but honeybees somehow make it work. They flap super hard and work um, extensively to go around and collect nectar to make honey. So we've kind of, you know, used this mindset here as we go into 2020, we're going to focus on the positive, the sweetness, the nectar, right? And ignore the noise of today. So that's kind of our school-wide theme for our students and our teachers. Um, so again, this is going to be difficult, but remember that we're a team. We've been spending the last couple of weeks doing professional development with our teachers uh, to empower them with our resources and tools that we have put together. Um, and then lesson planning for how to keep in mind the entire character of your student not just about whether or not they're meeting all those standards in their core subjects but how are they doing in regards to their emotional state right in this difficult school year that is going to be a, a sincere focus of ours is their overall mental well-being next one Corey. okay um so the first thing we wanted to tackle with you guys is zoom if you are borrowing a computer from us uh the zoom is already downloaded onto the chrome or excuse me onto the chromebook so it's there for you on the bottom left hand corner of your Chromebook, if you're using that, if you just type in Zoom in the search icon, bottom left hand corner, um, we're going to share this presentation, by the way, with everyone via email after um, our session tonight. So feel free you know, to take notes, of course, but we will send this to you. So don't worry, you'll get a copy of this presentation so you can move at your own pace later. So if you type in the search bar, Zoom, Zoom should pop up. Uh, your school this year is going to be using Zoom to call your students every single day. Excuse me. Your students will be signing into their calls every day. I'm going to go over how to do that. Uh, our teachers, to make this really easy, have the same almost like phone number. So your students are going to have that available to them, posted every single day, make it very easy for them to know how to sign in with their teacher. And the teacher will be there live to walk them through their lessons of the day. Um, so when it comes to Zoom, um, our school day is starting at 8.30. We'll go over that specific schedule with Ms. Hilliard and Ms. Hicks here in a little bit, but we are very much wanting your help with making sure your student knows the school day starts at 8.30. Okay, so we are going to want your help to make sure that they're out of bed, they are their teeth are brushed, they've had a breakfast. I really want to help them kind of maintain some normalcy here right in the schedule and structure and make sure they're ready every day at 8.30 to begin. We do ask that they're wearing a uniform um obviously zoom is from here up so that means the, that just means the g soda polo or that dry fit we actually ordered and picked out more colors this year so we got hot pink and we got all these other choices to pick from uh so they're not actually specific anymore to the L or to the intermediate primary middle school colors now they can choose from a whole palette um but we just ask that they wear that top you know again kind of helping with our mindset of you know getting ready for school um please make sure they wear pants um, but we don't, we don't care which ones they are. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, obviously, we're as much as possible, your teachers are going to work super hard to, you know, you know, lesson plan with really creative activities for your students to keep them engaged. Um, but obviously, we want your students to be as much as possible, um, respecting your teacher, respecting the class as though we were all physically in person together. Um, ask questions often. We're going to show you the features on Zoom, how to do that uh be respectful of course and then again we'll go over that schedule for the specifics of what time your students will have which classes um and no they are not going to be staring at the computer the entire day we know that is not suitable um my all of us included right that have been on the computers all the time so we have built-in brain breaks lunch you know times to walk away from that screen for your student and your teachers teacher excuse me we'll go into that a little bit later Oh, now it works, of course. Okay, um, so for Zoom, when your student goes to log in, we want them to use that Gmail, mysoda.net email address. So when you pull up Zoom, you have this option of clicking the sign in with Google and your students should be using their mysoda email address to use Zoom. That makes it very easy for our teachers to see who it is that's logging in. Our teachers have been instructed in order to protect the privacy of our students and our staff. 
They're not going to let in people that they don't know who they are. So please make sure that your student is using that MySoda email address because then it shows the teacher who it is. Okay. If you plan for them to use a personal device at home, um, again, make sure they're signing in with that Gmail account so that we, we know who they are and we can let them in. Okay. Um, here's where I was talking about that code uh, that the teachers have is, is unique to that teacher and it will not change. So very easy. So um, when you go to type in the meeting ID, um, it's our PMI or personal meeting ID, um, your teachers are going to share with you what those are today. Again, we're going to send this presentation home in an email after today, so you'll have all access to this. The teachers will be posting this every day on Google Classroom, so it should be very easy to get your students logged in each day. Um, so again, the meeting ID uh, gets typed in. Again, per teacher, that is different, but stays the same with that teacher all year. Uh, our school-wide password is SODA. So every grade level, it's S-O-T-A, all lowercase. So if you have multiple students here at GSOTA this year, everyone's password is the same S-O-T-A. Really easy. Um, again, when it comes to using Zoom, it has really wonderful uh, nonverbal feedback features where kids can do a thumbs up, thumbs down, clapping of the hand. They can tell the teacher to, to speed up if they're getting tired. Um, and they can tell them to slow down. We hope they don't tell them to speed up, but they can. Um, so the point is we're using Zoom because it has a lot of really great features. Um, but we are being very secure about it, wanting to ensure that we don't have any people that aren't supposed to be in there get access. So that's why we've got passwords and things like that to protect your student. Uh, so I kind of just went all over that. But what I wanted to talk about next was uh, a couple of reminders with this whole virtual situation. So because we're having the students use Zoom and they're going to be on the internet, please make sure that you do like a test run and just make sure you've got strong internet for the computer. Um, you'll find that out pretty quickly at the beginning, but the best way to do that, if you have kids who are gamers, you know, and I'm sure they've let you know that they get the best Wi-Fi the closer they are to the router, right? Um, so just try to find a place in your home that you can commit for your student to have a nice workspace that's close to that router so they've got strong Wi-Fi. And then keep in mind that because their webcam is going to be on, you want a place in your home that you're going to commit for your student that you're happy with the background. Okay, it does not need to be anything fancy. I just mean that like, you know, don't make it the front door where people are coming in and out all the time and your students getting distracted. You know, try to find a part of your home that you can commit where they've got a nice workspace, it's quiet, they've got strong Wi-Fi, um, things of that nature, um, but they are gonna have that webcam on. So just be aware of that, okay? So in our homes, that means that, you know, if you're walking behind them, they're gonna see it, so. Make sure the t-shirts are on and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> all right. Um, these are just some examples. So again, you know, if you have a desk, that's great. But if you have a nice kitchen counter space, that's fine too. Just being aware of that, you know, and kind of planning for it is all that we're asking um, you to do. All right. So that was Zoom. Again, Zoom is going to be really easy. Um, you just have two third grade teachers. Ms. Hicks is teaching math and science. Ms. Hilliard is teaching ELA and social studies. So whenever they're supposed to be with Ms. Hilliard, they've got that same Zoom call. When they're supposed to be with Ms. Hicks, they've got that same login information, okay? For our specials teachers, same thing. They all have their own unique login information, but all of this will be provided to you and your student at the beginning. I'm sure it's going to be a bit of a challenge to get them settled, but the idea is these things won't change. So bear with us for those first couple days. These kids are better at the technology than we are, so they're probably going to get this a lot faster than you and I would. Um, so we're going to talk about Google. <laughs> so Google Classroom is awesome, uh, and we're going to talk about the difference between Jupyter Ed and how Google Classroom is going to work this year. Um, and the answer is, you know, we're choosing Google Classroom because uh, Google Classroom is basically a central digital workspace for your teachers to be able to post lessons links to different resources they want to work on with your student. Um, they can have things like discussion boards and polls with your students. I know you're like, they're in third grade. What are you doing here? Um, but there are a lot of really awesome features of Google Classroom. Um, but the purpose of it is to be that creative, collaborative workspace. Jupyter Ed is still remaining as our student information system. So think Google Classroom is where your student's learning is going to occur. Jupyter Ed is where all the serious business goes down. So behavior-related concerns, um, if you want to contact a teacher directly, go through Jupyter Ed. If you want to contact an administrator, 
I'm sorry. My name's Erin Ryan. I am the assistant principal this year at Garden School of Technology Arts. Just realized I didn't introduce myself. Thank you. So if you want to talk to me, that's where you'll find me. They can't see me at home. Okay. So, so that's the difference. Um, so Jupiter Red, again, just think that is where um, you can find student contact information and keep that updated for us. So make sure your emails are up to date. Um, your phone numbers are up to date if those have changed because that's how we know to reach you. So Jupiter Ed remains that student information system, whereas Google Classroom is your fun, collaborative learning experience for your student this year. So Jupiter Ed, serious? <laughs> Google Classroom, yeah. yeah. Um, all right, so now the fun part. So your teachers have already invited you to your Google Classroom. So what you're gonna do now, if you're here with us in person or at home, is you can now log in to G Suite for Education. Uh, if you're at home, you're just gonna type in Google Classroom. I'm gonna have that up on the next page, but if you just Google Google Classroom, it will pop up and you can log in with your students' credentials that we have up here. So again, first name, period, last name, at mysoda.net. If you're using one of our Chromebooks, um, there is a waffle icon. I'm gonna get to this in a second anyways, but Yep, if you click on the waffle icon, it's in the top right hand corner, you should see classrooms on there. So it's that emblem that has the green with the student in the center and the yellow border that looks like a green chalkboard. You can either search for it in the URL or you can pull it up as an app. Our staff can come around and help you out with this. If you're at home, feel free to type in the chat and we can help you. Yes, the waffle's fast. So I have more on that on the next slide, but again, some of you guys were kind of halfway there. So we're gonna go to Google Classroom now, and I'm gonna walk you through how that works. Um, a fun fact about Google is if you've noticed, most of their colors are primary colors, um, but the red, yellow, blue, green, um, and the reason for that is because the guys that actually created Google, who were college students, um, didn't have a whole lot of money because they're college students. So when they went to create the server that was the hardware that was going to run the search engine of Google, um, they didn't want to spend the expensive um, time and money on the brackets. So they instead just used an old Lego set to build the actual drive compartment. Um, so that's why their colors are always the Lego colors because the first server engine was built with Legos. So kind of funny. Um, all right. So again, when you go uh, to log in, the waffle icon is definitely the easiest way to go. The waffles in the top right corner on a Chromebook. Uh, that's where you should be able to click on and enter into Google Classroom. If it's the first time that your student is logging into Google Classroom, it's going to ask you, are you a teacher or a student? I'm sure your, your child has an opinion, but they are a student. <laughs> Click student. <laughs> Very hard to change it. Um, and once you're in there, you should see there should be invites that are pending, and it should say accept. And your teachers are awesome. have already created their math class, their ELA class, so you can go ahead and accept all those invites for your student. Okay? And do that for us. Uh, additional codes for uh, the classrooms are going to be shared if they haven't been yet. So we're not going to have any electives the first week of school. By the way, the first day of school is Monday. Um, some people had questions about that. It is Monday. so um, But they're not going to have PE, uh, art, which is with Miss Griffin, or tech arts that first week. And part of that is us transitioning in. We did not want to put too much at them, in the first, at, them at the first week. So we're going to ease them into their schedule. So again, some of you I know have been like, oh my gosh, how are they going to be on the computer all that much? It's not going to be that much. We have embedded brain breaks and we're giving them spaces in their schedule so they have time to decompress, eat lunch, get outside, uh, things like that. But again, no electives the first week. So there will be additional Google Classrooms we might ask you to join for PE, for art, and for tech arts. 
Um, so those might be coming at you in the first week, but the students will not have those live classes in the first week. Uh, okay, so this next slide, I would like you to add this class. So you guys, if you go to your main Google Classroom page, what you can do by accessing on the left side of Google Classroom, you've got classes and calendar. If you click on classes, in the top corner on the right side, there should be a plus icon. When you click on the plus icon, you have the choice to join a class. When you click on join class, the code that's up here that says elementary parent tech support, this one that's in navy blue, the 5GFX4UT, that is Miss Bree, who is our technology um, arts teacher for K to five. She is um, essentially manning that Google Classroom always for parent tech support, okay? So Miss Bree, especially this first week, she's not teaching any classes. She is fully available to you if you have questions or concerns about technology. Okay, so you can right now join by typing this code in and adding this class. Miss Bree's already posted materials on there to help you as parents navigate um, any of these different things we're throwing at you in regards to technology. And she is there to answer questions if you're struggling to get on an app or a resource. You can contact her there um, directly. Oh, there's one person in the waiting room. Um, but we can go to the next one. We're going to send this home with you guys again in an email, so you'll get this whole slide again. Okay, last but not least, um, when we talk about the tech issues, uh, again, 2020, if there's anything that we're trying to pack this year, it's patience, because we can't go on vacation. So um, pack our patience. So when it's not working, this is your tree of, of how to contact and get help for you and your student. So number one, check the Google Classrooms. Hopefully right now you guys are now all accepted of the invites and any of those are direct links for your, you to see your students work, what's going on this week, um, what the teacher's saying. You can you know, type things in there to talk to them directly. Okay, um, most likely if, when you're asking about assignments, it's gonna be there. We are not, let me rephrase this. We are, are trying as much as possible to accomplish learning and schoolwork during the school day. We certainly are not trying to put any work on your students in this situation that will extend beyond the school day. I can't promise there sometimes won't be perhaps an activity here or there if it's helping with remediation of your student, but overall, most of the work for your students should be taking place during the school day. So in regards to homework, we really shouldn't have that problem. We've restructured our curriculum to accommodate this virtual learning setting. Um, Again, the parent tech support, which hopefully you just added or you can later. Miss Bree's sitting there ready to answer your questions if you have any. Um, and finally, if you're still having trouble, you can't get your kid on a Zoom call and you just don't know what to do, then just call the front desk. So we'll be here every day to help you. We just ask that you don't try to email the teacher while they're trying to teach. Just call us because we can help you faster than the teacher can. Okay, because they're going to be teaching, obviously, um, 20 students at a time. So if you're having issues, just call us. And we can help you do that rather than the teacher having to wait till a break to get back to you. Okay. And next one. I think that's it. Go back real quick for me, please. All right. So again, um, I introduced, and I didn't see Miss Jackie come in, but again, we have Miss Rice, who is our contact for ESC 504 and ESOL. We have Miss Boswell over here in the back, um, who is our reading intervention specialist. Leslie Whitaker, she's not with us tonight, but she is our new SLP, so for speech. If your student has that service, she will be providing that this year. And again, Ms. Newcomb is our other ESC support teacher um, that you may, may have, uh, may be working with this year. The next slide is talking about those elective classes. It's super adorable, just like the last slide, but they, um, these are your elective teachers. Again, no, no electives will take place the first week, but eventually that rotation is going to start where your students will have live PE and live art live tech arts at some point during the week. I know you are like, how is that gonna work? Um, but it's really awesome to see all the creative um, activities that the electives teachers or the fine arts teachers have come up with to keep your students engaged, keep them healthy, right? And then satisfy that other learning in regards to the arts. Yes, yeah, and it's important to remember, good point, it's important to remember that a lot of the activities they've designed, um, they're gonna share a little bit here in a second, 
a lot of the activities and lesson plans are designing, they're always trying to think, how can I get their eyes off the screen and still accomplish learning? Okay, so it might be that they walk away from the laptop and they do 10 jumping jacks and they come back and, you know, they start spitting game at the other people in the Zoom call about whatever PE challenge they're doing. But the idea is we are very conscious of that screen time. So I believe that's it for me. So I'm going to turn it over here to your third grade teachers. And I'll just don't hit the mic. All right, well, hello. I am Mrs. Hilliard. Um, I teach reading, writing, and social studies. And this year we have Miss Hicks joining my awesome third grade team. <laughs> and she's going to be doing math and science. All right, so this is a little bit about me. This is my first year at G Soda, but I, oh, sorry. Sorry, people at home. Um, I have three kids that, well, one of them's done at G Soda, he's in high school now, and two that are in the middle school program. So even though it's my first year teaching here, I do have some familiarity with G Soda and how everything works. Um, there's a little bit of background, you can read it if you want, I don't need to read all of it, but um, I'm coming from preschool the last few years, moving back up a little bit to third grade, so I'm really excited about that. So um, I have math and science. So uh, like Miss Ryan was saying, I'm gonna make it as interactive as I can, especially science. But I still want them to be able to do some hands-on stuff whenever possible. And also Miss Ryan was talking about um, trying to break up the screen time. We'll definitely be doing some like science journals and things where you have materials in your bags that will at least get them off of the screen periodically, so. Hi, and this is just a little bit about myself. Um, this is actually my sixth year here at G Soda. Um, <laughs> I've taught third and fourth and fifth grade while I've been here. So um, I know G Soda, I love G Soda. Um, I went to UCF in Orlando and I have two boys. I'm sure if you guys watched my video, you saw them, they joined in on it. I have a five-year-old and a almost three-year-old. Um, and that's about it. <laughs> Yes, my husband's a police officer. <laughs> All right, so up here, this is our, um, our breakdown of our schedule. The classes are put into two separate ones. Some of your kids are in 301, meaning that Miss Hicks is their homeroom teacher, and some of the students are put in 302, meaning that I am their homeroom teacher, Miss Hilliard. So it just shows you breaking down how long everything is going to be. When you look at it, it would say like from 8.30 to 11, you would be with Miss Hicks. This is what's going on during that 8.30 to 11 time and vice versa with me and then in the afternoon. So you can really look at this and see each one. I'm not going to read it all, but if you look in there, there's brain breaks, exercise, bathroom breaks. Again, getting them away from the computer so they're not staring at it the whole time because it's very cumbersome for them. Yeah. Okay, so we'll just talk quickly about some of the expectations for third grade and some of these um, Miss Ryan has already kind of covered, so I'll just go through them quickly. Um, you should use your child's homeroom teacher as the primary contact for issues that you're having. And then if necessary, you can follow up with the other teacher as appropriate. Um, any communication between parents and teachers should be through Jupiter Ed. Like Ms. Ryan said, that's kind of for the hardcore stuff. Um, and Google Classroom will be for our daily lessons and activities. Um, Ms. Ryan talked about a dedicated place with limited distractions as much as you can. That's great. And we ask that they will have eaten, use the bathroom. We will give bathroom breaks, like she said. They have to go, you know, if we get it, they have to go. But um, try to have them go before. Um, and any assignments will be posted in Google Classroom. So you can find the information that you need. You know, if you're at work and you come home and you're not sure what we did that day and you want to make sure, you can go into Google Classroom and it will be listed there. Did you have a question? Yeah, just around here, how would they know the You'll, there's a slide. It's coming. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is just some of our goals and focus for this year. Um, the students are going to learn how to log into Google using their email address. We know this is brand new to every student that's coming into us. 
So we will be patient. We will go over it a lot in the next couple of weeks. So it becomes just second nature to them because we'll be using it all the time. Um, the students will increase stamina and be able to increase independent work time. So again, I might say go off and you have 30 minutes. You need to be reading out of the novel that we have. They will go and read that novel, hopefully. They don't have to be sitting on the screen where I'm staring at them, making sure that they're doing it. They can do work and then come back depending on what is assigned to them. Um, the students will focus on self-monitoring, self asking for help when needed. Again, when I'm in small groups pulling kids for reading on Zoom, there's going to be kids doing other sections by themselves. Yes, they can type to me and I can come back to help them, but they need to be able to self-monitor themselves and make sure they are staying on task so we're getting everything done that needs to get done. Um, the students will enjoy live lessons and engage with teacher and classmates in a respectful and enthusiastic setting. We want them to be happy to be there. We hope they're happy to be there. <laughs> We're going to try to make it as exciting as possible for them to stare at our face all the time. So um, hopefully they will be enthusiastic, which will help us out too. And then um, the students will feel supported, respected, and loved by their teachers, and will understand that we are there to support them always. That's always, no matter where we are. If we're here, if we're on the computer, we are here for them. We are here for you guys. We want to make the best out of the situation. So hopefully it will all be great. <laughs> okay, so these are some of our um, policies. If your student has a birthday coming up while we're on virtual learning, um, the homeroom teacher will communicate with you. We'll, we'll try to make it make them feel special. We still know that birthdays and all these things still matter, even if we're stuck at home. Um, so we want to try our best to virtually make them feel special about that. Um, please keep in mind, you know, we both have children too. We have things outside of school. We'll get back to you as soon as we can, but we ask you to be respectful and to give us a little bit of time, especially if you, you know, send something later in the evening. It may take us until the next day to get back to you, but we will get back as soon as possible. Um, and like Ms. Ryan said, if it's during the school day, the best thing, if you're having like a tech issue, if the best thing is not necessarily to email us if we're teaching, because it's really challenging to be tried to check both at the same time. So use the other resources that she mentioned to get that help that you need. Um, and all the assignments listed on Google Classroom can and should be completed during independent work time and during live class hours. The only reason the student should have to work to complete things after hours is if they're not completed during the day, but Ms. Ryan explained to you guys, we're trying really hard to not have too much work for them left to do in the evening. You have a question? So it says on there that all email should be on the computer, Jupiter I will make it a little bit easier for us to track correspondence. Maybe yes, you can so you can obviously contact the teacher as well uh, through the just their email account, but Jupiter I kind of lets us log, you know, and, and be able to stay on top of it better and let us in administration as well to be able to do all those messages. So we prefer to use Jupiter I that way we can help stay on top of it along with the teachers and sure you have your answers as quickly as possible rather than just sending an email to the teacher. I just figured because he's going to be using Google Classroom rather than if I wanted him to email you guys for a question, he would do it right from there instead of having to go on. If it's a student, yeah, teacher, then yes, a student can email them directly. I was thinking like a parent. No, both questions. It's great. Both answers. Yeah, no, absolutely. If it's students, a teacher, email. That's perfect. But if it's parent to teacher, please make sure it's the teacher I want to get the front of the shirt in the back to be able to have the answer to you. Thank you. Yes. All right, so the next two slides, I believe, tells you who's in which homeroom. And again, you guys are going to get this um, slide so you'll be able to see. And you actually have already gotten it from us. We sent it um, a couple days ago in your email. So this is Miss Hicks' homeroom. And then you can go ahead and go to the next one and they could see. Oh, so here's our daily schedule again, broken down like we already showed you. But here you can see exactly the Zoom ID. This is all from Miss Hicks' page. I'm having trouble saying that today. Um, so if you are with Miss Hicks in the morning, then you're with me in the after, after lunch. So it shows exactly the Zoom ID for Miss Hicks in the morning and my Zoom ID in the afternoon. So this could kind of be a good go to. Um, slide for you guys to know right away with our Zoom IDs. Can I ask you yeah. Um, is it 
is there an easy way for the kids to be able to access the Zoom ID? Like, say, I'm not home. That was one of the issues I had with Patera last year. Is, okay, it's this date. You can just click on that, open up the Zoom. Yes, we're going to put and our. Type it in. Yes, the, especially the first yeah. week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I totally get it. We're going to put our link. <laughs> We're gonna put our link on um, on our Google Classroom so they can just click on that link. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, we totally get it. We're trying to put I'm not sure if you guys can hear at home, but what they're saying is the um, page that's up, if you could print that and put it in your child's workspace so they can see exactly what time and who, what the um, Zoom ID is and who they have. So they won't have to keep clicking and looking around for it. Are we good to go on? Yes. Okay, you're welcome. And then here's um, my Miss Hilliard's um, homeroom class. Basically, if you weren't on the other one, you're on this one. <laughs> And then if you are in my homeroom, this is your daily schedule. So this would be the page that you print off for your child to follow daily. So basically just pay attention to the 301 and 302. 301, you're with Ms. Hicks homeroom. 302, you are with Ms. Hilliard's homeroom. Yeah, And these are just some links um, that have actually we've gone over today um, that you can click right on when you get this power or this um, slideshow. You can click right on it and it'll pull it up just for easier access. And then this is just a couple of the classroom um, usernames and passwords for websites that we're going to be using this year. So we will make a full form and put it on Google Classroom once we have everything with all of the sites, all the usernames and all the passwords where hopefully all the ones that do link up with Google, all your child will have to do is sign in with Google, which will be very easy and helpful for them. Um, did you want to add something? Um, Quick. Mm -hmm. So I know we talked about this at the beginning, but real quick for the people at home too, there is a K to two login on a borrowed Chromebook from the G from our school. So if you are taking home a device tonight, or you've already picked one up and you have one of ours that you're using for your students' education, you need to make sure they're logging in with that email address that is specific to them. There is an icon that pops up K to two. If you click on that, it doesn't require passwords, which at the moment seems great because it just lets you right in but it doesn't have Zoom downloaded. It won't give you access to your child's Google Classrooms. They will not be able to communicate with us. So please make sure that when your student opens their Chromebook, that they're logging in with the first name, period, last name at mysoda.net. Anyone at home or that's here in person at the end, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, just stay and we can double check for you and make sure that you see what you're supposed to do there. Okay. Um, so again, do not click on the K2. Oh, also one more thing about security. Oops. Um, this Chromebook, if you're borrowing one of ours, is under our domain. It is monitored by our security software, which means anything that happens on that computer, we will see. So please make sure that if you have other students in your household, they are not using that computer. I mean, the computer obviously is given to you for the purpose of your child's education. Um, when I say that, once again, 
anything that's searched on that computer is going to be alerted to us. So take that as you wish, but do not use that computer for anything else besides your child's education place. Um, that being said, if you do use it for something and you change the Gmail login, meaning if you have like a personal Gmail account and you log in on the Chromebook under that, it's gonna, mem it's gonna remember that. So when your student goes to open their device, it's gonna have yours up there and that means they're not gonna be able to get into their Google Classroom, okay? So just make sure that the student is using that device, it's solely for their education and it stays logged in under their G Soda email address. So that way they're not stuck, not able to get back in because it's logged into yours or somebody else's. And anything that you don't want to be seen on that computer, just don't use that computer. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we are. All right, so. That's basically it. Do you guys have any questions for Ms. Hicks or myself about anything that we've gone over? If you think of something tonight, again, just email us. We will answer it to the best of our ability. We want to make this a great, great school year. Hopefully we'll be back in person sometime. <laughs> but um, until then, yes. Yes, it's the FSA and we haven't heard any word. So but yes, normally on a, yes, <laughs> yes. So Monday, June 30th, what's the first thing I need to go to your classroom, my kids do a homepage, and you're going to have a student on the Yes, correct? yes. Yes, so question was, and this is good for everybody, Monday morning, let's say 820, have your child with their computer open, have it on, and they need to log into the computer with their email address and their PB number that was given to them tonight if you were here. Some of you got it messaged to you. If you need it, email Ms. Hicks or myself. We will email it right back to you. I have all of them for you. Once they are signed in, they need to go to Google Classroom. The link will be there for them to click for Zoom. Homeroom teacher, yes. patience and help everybody get it down so that after a while hopefully it becomes second nature and for you guys hopefully it means a little more independence they can be doing most of it without your assistance that's the goal so yeah, that's the goal, <laughs> that's the goal. <laughs> uh, there's a couple questions in the chat so at this time I'm going to start to answer them and any questions you guys have here just raise your hand and we'll we'll answer you guys here in person too. Um, a couple of questions were about the workbook. So everyone at this point that's here tonight uh, should have gotten their bag of supplies for your student. That is for the whole year. We are not going to ask you to go out and get another supply list at when we're, whenever we come back. My crystal ball isn't working today. I have no idea when that is. But um, the point is, is that those supplies are for your student um, for, the, for the year. Um, if you are at home, please make sure you're coming in to get that for them. Those bags have your student's math workbook. They have any books that have been provided, consumables for them to write in. There's also, you know, utensils, writing utensils in there. There's some different art items, I believe. Um, so it would be a great practice to just keep that at whatever workspace you've committed for your student. That way, when they're asking them to grab that math workbook, they're not like running around the house trying to figure out where it is. So try to just keep all of that at their workspace have them there at 820 to get logged into the computer. And the idea is with, you know, that information sheet printed out with the Zoom codes, your, your child teacher should be able to take it from there. Are they to, like, the for people at home, uh, the question was, are the workbooks going to have to have pictures taken of them and uploaded to show proof of completion? And the answer is, as of now, no. Um, they are going to ask students to hold them up on the Zoom calls to show them what they're working on. If, if it was a concern about um, helping your student, you know, and learning from what the mistakes they're doing and, and working with them, they might ask them to upload it, but not as a regular practice. All right. Especially ELA. So if your student is working on spelling or working on writing and they're making mistakes and you're hovering over them and you're like, ah, 
now and he wants so badly to help them. I know it's hard, but please don't because your teachers are professionals and they, they know from the students' mistakes that they're making how best to teach them and guide them to learn how to make those adjustments. So we ask that as hard as it is, try not to interfere with them when they're making mistakes at home. Let, let, let your teachers take it from there. Um, but again, you can always email them if you have questions or concerns about their performance and, and things of that nature. Um, there was a... Uh, Um, any other questions from people at home or here in person? Anything at all? Again, no electives the first week. We will make sure that your student gets added to those classes. There's a bee challenge theme, again, that we're going on with this year with the bees. Um, every week there will be motivational SEL-based uh, challenges that the fine arts teachers are going to be supporting every Friday as long as your student has completed that challenge. They'll be entered into a hat where their names will get pulled and winners each week will get a prize um, in the form of coupons for like McDonald's fries is one of the suggestions um, as a motivation to keep them doing these other kindness challenges. At home, every time a student's name uh, is pulled and they win, their name comes out, meaning any student who didn't win that week gets entered for the following week. So just something fun to increase their chances each time and keep them motivated doing those other kindness quests, things like that. Um, all right, I think that's about it. In the back, Ms. Newcomb, join us. This is Ms. Jackie Newcomb. She is also one of our ESD support teachers, so she may be working with your child this year, so feel free to say hi to her in the back as well. If you guys don't have any questions, I think this is good. Yes. Thank you so much for being here online. Thank you guys. If you have any questions, uh, please make sure to come in to get your materials at the front desk at G Soda uh, before Monday. I'm just gonna leave that on. All right, thanks everybody. If you have any questions again that come up here while you're packing up, we're all here to help you. Oh.